how to finish your Roblox games faster. So years ago, I used to spend way too long making my projects. And the reason for this is I made several mistakes that made my games take forever to complete. And these are mistakes that most people are making, and especially people who love building. Building ends up causing a lot of problems in development, believe it or not, when you focus on it too much. So let's get into it. The first mistake is doing building first. So for some games, it's fine to do building first. For some games, building truly does come first in the process. If you are making a showcase, right, where you're showing your building skills, you can absolutely focus on the building first. But for most games, it's more important that you focus on the gameplay first. And how do you get gameplay? How do you make a game that functions? You script it, right? So instead, you want to focus on the scripting first. Because we are trying to make this game playable. The gameplay is the most important thing, right? But the funny thing is, most devs start building the maps first. Why? Why do devs like to build the maps before they script the game? The reason is, building is easy. Building is easy. When you are sitting there in studio placing parts, manipulating the terrain, like using the terrain editor, uh, tweaking the exact uh, size of a certain build. All these things are incredibly easy tasks. But what is daunting, what is considered hard to most devs, right? You might be watching this, you might be like, I'm the master scripter, that's easy. But to most devs, right? Let's be real, scripting the gameplay is incredibly hard for them. And oftentimes, many devs, when they're new, they don't even know how to script, right? If it's your first project, you probably open up studio and you're like, mm, you know what, I'm gonna start building the map. And all that scripting stuff, I'll figure that out later, right? But in doing that, you're focusing on something that doesn't matter. Building does not matter. It doesn't matter nearly as much as people act like it does, as it does not matter nearly as much as the gameplay. Because look at it this way, right? If you have the perfect map, but no scripting, you just have a map. If you have incredible scripting, but no map, you have a game still. You have a playable project. That means that the most important thing is the gameplay and getting that done. So you wanna focus on the core systems first. So you wanna focus on your core loop, right? So let's say you're making a simulator. So a simulator, you might have coin piles on the ground, like pet simulator, right? break coin piles, get better pets, and then rebirth. This is your primary, secondary, tertiary core loop. You wanna get these three systems in place before you get anything else in place, right? The hoverboard you want to add, like Pet Simulator has a hoverboard, right? If you're making a game like this, that is extra, can come later, okay? So don't focus on random systems first. Focus on systems that are essential to the core loop. Now the third mistake is perfectionism. So the third mistake that made my games take forever to get out is I thought they had to be perfect. But here's the problem, when you're trying to make a perfect project, like I was trying to make the best roleplay game ever, with my dad, we were trying to make the next Brookhaven effectively. When you try to make that game, you're basically trying to hit an unattainable goal, at least when you're a new dev. Trying to make the next Jailbreak, or the next Brookhaven, or the next Royale High, or the next Arsenal even, is too high of a goal. So you need to start simple. Make simple games first. Remove perfectionism, and make an MVP. An MVP is a minimum viable product. This is the absolute bare bones version of your game that works. If it functions, if you can play it, if this works, if the core loop is functional, if I'm making a game like Pet Simulator and I can break coin piles, I can get better pets and I can rebirth, 
That's it. That's all I need to ship the game. That and then the very minimum amount of builds and models that are required for the gameplay. So just a few pets, map or two or three. That's all I need to be able to ship that MVP to the market. When you're making your MVP and really when you're making your entire game, especially when you're a new dev with limited resources, like limited time, limited team members, it might just be you or no money, you wanna run everything through the 80-20 rule. Focus on the 20% that get you 80% of your results. So 20% of the tasks in your game are gonna to lead to 80% of what you need to actually ship an MVP. So when we're focusing on just the scripting, first and foremost, and then just making the core loop function, and then only making the few maps and the few models that we need to get that game out there, we are using the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle. The 80-20 rule is how we decide what goes into our MVP. We're looking for the highest leverage aspects of our game. The highest leverage skill to focus on is scripting. The highest leverage systems to script are the core loop systems. The highest leverage building and modeling work are the few maps and the few models you need to actually get to that functioning prototype. Now, the fourth thing that made my game development slower than it needed to be was not focusing on releasing the game, not focusing on a specific deadline. We need to get the game out by this time or else. We need to hit this date. We need to get this game out by October 1st, right? And we need to do everything we can, everything in our power to get there. So the reason that this will make it so that your game takes longer to produce is something called Parkinson's Law, which says that work expands to fill the time allotted for its completion. So if we allow our game to take years to make and there's no deadline on it at all, it's probably going to expand to years. But if you shorten that time frame to three weeks, now you are going to automatically apply the 80-20 rule, automatically cut the fat that you don't need to get that project out there in a functioning fun and monetized state, you're going to remove all the nonsense. So when you have a very tight deadline that's very, very soon, within a few weeks or a month max, you're going to be forced to use the 80-20 rule. And it's going to become extremely logical why I say to basically ignore building and modeling altogether. Put it last in the process. Building, modeling, even UI, animation, VFX, all that stuff is polish. And as a new dev, we need to be focused on what allows our game to ship, what gets us to an MVP state. And that all centers around scripting and getting that gameplay working. Now, finally, this might seem a little bit odd, right? Because it doesn't seem like something that would actually slow you down, but you're going to realize that it is. And it is one of the things that slows down devs the most. This is not marketing. Not marketing is one of the biggest mistakes that devs make. And marketing does not start at the end of your project, right? You don't start marketing your game when you start posting TikToks about it and making sponsors on Roblox. No, the marketing needs to start at the beginning. Marketing starts with figuring out what players want. What does the market of Roblox want? Not what do I want to make, what does the market want. When you focus on marketing, before you focus on the creation process of making your game, you actually end up finding ideas that take less time to make and are more motivating and that push your Roblox development career forward more. You're going to find that games like simulators, steal a games, my singing games, even tycoons, obbies, all are succeeding in the Roblox marketplace. But not only that, all of these games are simple games, which means it's going to take less resources for you to produce as a dev, allowing you to enact this process more effectively and more efficiently. Now, the great thing is when you focus on these market aligned games that are proven to work, you increase the likelihood that you make money on your games, that you earn a profit. And when you earn a profit, you speed up the process in your game development on every project that you make going forward, as long as you use those funds to invest in those games. 
because when you make money, right? When you make money on your game from game passes, developer products, etc., you have capital, which is leverage that you can use to get a team. Hiring a team is one of the highest leverage moves you can make on Roblox because now you don't have to do everything yourself with your time and effort. Your time and effort being spent in studio is low leverage. It is low leverage work to sit there building and modeling the map. It is higher leverage to do the scripting than it is to do the building and modeling, but it's still lower leverage than, than owning the project and managing all the developers below you and ideating. That's what game design is. So in the long term, everything will be made faster when you make money and then reinvest it properly in new projects, spend it on good, competent developers who are fast, keep them accountable to deadlines, make the games with the same framework, but now do it with all these other people working under you, builders, scripters, modelers, UI designers, animators, graphic designers, have all these people working under you, that way you have the work of not one person, but five people or 10 people. Of course, that's gonna be faster if your team actually embodies hard work, discipline, and loyalty. If you are a one-man team, you will always be the bottleneck in your game development process because everything must be done by you and therefore it's limited by your time. Like if you have a limited schedule, especially like if you have school or another job, you don't have enough time to get to spend on that project to get it out quickly. Nothing else will make your Roblox game development faster than hiring a team. Now that I have found a way to hire devs, now that I've found that great resource, which allows me to get cost-effective labor from people who are hardworking and good people to work with, I am now able to get games out faster than I did when it was just me and just my small team. Click here to learn more insights you will not hear anywhere else about how to run a business on Roblox as opposed to just being a solo developer. This is the only channel that teaches this. I'll see you there.